Hey everyone, it's Ashley. Welcome back to my channel for another Trinity Stamps video. Today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different and I'm calling this a flip surprise card. This uses acetate as a card base and for that I am using Hero Arts acetate folded cards. For the stamp set that I'll be creating with, I'm using Rhino Bird Day from Trinity Stamps. And I'm also going to be using the Blendabilities brushes to create this really beautiful blended rainbow scene. And I'll talk about that a little bit more when we get there. First for the card base, as I said, this is an acetate card base, but these also come with paper card bases as well. They also come with uh, envelopes. So this is a really great uh, set to have for acetate card bases. I'm going to be using just one panel or one half of the paper card base. And for inks today, I'm using Samba, Limoncello, Mardi Gras, Fiesta Blue, Flirty Fuchsia, and Be Mine, all Catherine Puller inks. So to begin, I'm going to use the brushes, as I said, to create this beautiful rainbow scene. And to do that again, I'm going to be using the My Favorite Things Cloud Stencil. If you watched my last video, you'll know that I've really been loving this cloud stencil lately. I just think that it's really cool and it gives a really realistic look. And the Blendabilities brushes work so great with it. So I'm going to be using all of these colors to create this rainbow cloud scene. So I'm going in order of a rainbow, so Roy G. Biv, although I did not choose an orange because I know that the limoncello mixed with the samba will give an orangey look. I am then going to go ahead and go into Mardi Gras, Flirty Fuchsia, and then Be Mine, and this is going to give a really beautiful rainbow effect to the clouds. It came out even better than I would have expected. And these brushes are so great for blending. I also just wipe them off on a wipe in between, uh, on a baby wipe in between colors just to make sure that there's no contamination. Even though I do want it to blend a bit, I don't want the colors to mix completely. And then on the very bottom there, I'm just going to blend a little bit more Samba and that way the cloud on the very bottom will get a little bit of color as well and won't be just white. To stamp my Rhino images, I'm using Memento Tuxedo Black ink. If you've watched my videos before, you'll know that I use this ink when I'm going to Copic color because it is Copic safe, meaning the alcohol and the markers won't make the ink run. I'm using my Misty to do this just in case I need to re-stamp it, but it's also a great idea to do this on a Misty so that you can re-stamp the images after you've colored them just to give it a little bit more of a clean cut look. I'm going to put all of these shades of the Copic markers that I used in the description as always, if you're interested in that. But I did wanna let you know that I do speed this up a bit. As I said in all of my videos, I am not a Copic color artist, but I love trying it out and trying new techniques. And I have been into trying my lightest shade first, followed by my darkest shade for shadows, and then my mid-tone to blend it all in together. And then I go back in again with my lightest shade. On our team, we have Courtney Krieber, who is a wonderful colorist, and I will link to some of her coloring videos in the description for Trinity Stamps. She has a lot of great tips, and I think that you could learn a lot from her as well as I could. So I'm just going to go ahead and put a little bit of music on so you can see me finish this up. You'll see I am doing one rhino in this pink color, and then I'll do one in a gray color. And I'll see you in just a minute.
So now that I've gone ahead and finished up, I'm going to bring in a white gel pen just to add some details to the rhinos. And I think it just makes them look a little shiny, maybe like their like their uh, skin is a little bit shiny, maybe from a reflection or the sun. And I really like when people do this, especially to Copic colored critters. So I decided to give it a try as well. I'm using the coordinating dies to cut out my rhinos and so that the dies won't move around in my die cutting machine I'm using a very low tack uh, painters tape to hold them down and here's what they look like when they're all cut out they're just so adorable and I actually really love the way that I colored them and I'm very uh, proud of myself at the moment so I'm going to be putting some of the scene on the inside of the acetate base and then some right on top of the front of the acetate base. And once I get it all together, you'll see where I'm going with this. Uh, but right now I just want to see where I'd like my rhinos to sit. And then I'm going to take a pair of scissors and fussy cut out the bottom uh, cloud. And I went a little bit low, I think, when I was blending. So I just started a little bit higher, but then I'm going to continue on and cut the shape of that cloud out. And this bottom portion that I'm cutting out right now is going to go on the very front and the top of the acetate base. So just hold on, bear with me, see where I'm going with this. So I'm just applying this with some glue. And I just want to say, after I did this, I realized I probably really should have used maybe some score tape or something because glue is not forgiving to a very movable acetate base. It sort of started peeling up. So I just want to add that in here. I've also put it in the description uh, just to be sure, but I would not use glue for this again. I would use something like score tape or a tape runner. So you can see I put that bottom cloud on the very outside of the acetate base and now I'm going to put the remaining the remaining scene on the inside of the very top of the acetate base and when it is shut you'll see it looks seamless because of the clear acetate. So it just looks like one scene for right now and that's going to be the part of the flip card that is the surprise. So I am going to now take grass skirt from Catherine Pooler, again using my Blend Abilities brushes, and I'm going to blend that green color all over this long sort of rectangular block, and this is going to serve as grass. Now I'm going to put the grass on the inside of the acetate base as well, and this will make my, another scene. To give it some texture and a little bit more of a realistic look, I'm taking a few Copic marker shades of green and yellow green, and I am just adding these little swooshy marks to look like grass. So I just do it so it's a little bit fatter at the bottom, and then I swoosh up to a pretty fine point, and this will give the effect of grass. So I'm now going to adhere that grass underneath the clouds, and I'm going to do that on the inside of the card base on the inside scene. So when the card is completely closed, it will look as if the rhinos are sort of floating in the clouds. And it will also look like this pink rhino is a unicorn. And then when you open it, you'll realize that in reality, they're just sitting on the grass with this really beautiful sky behind them and uh, that he was just imagining that he was a unicorn. And I really love the surprise of flipping it open and realizing that it's not all one scene um, because of that bottom section there uh, of the clouds that are cut out. So I'm now playing around with just where I would like this unicorn horn to be. I'm going to glue this to the outside card base so that when you open it, it goes up with the clouds. So the unicorn horn won't be on the inside scene. And I at first wanted to put it on his horn, like on his nose, but I realized that it just didn't look right. It didn't work out that way. So I just went ahead and put it on the top of his head, just like a normal unicorn. So now you'll see when I flip it up, just to give you a little bit of an idea of how it goes, you can see here that this rhino is a unicorn and he is floating in the clouds with his friend. But then when you go ahead and flip the card open, the clouds on the bottom go up to reveal grass and the unicorn horn goes away as well. So he's just a regular rhino. So here is the front view of the closed card. You can see that I added a sentiment find your inner unicorn on black cardstock with white embossing powder. And then I placed that on a very thin glitter cardstock strip just to add 
to the unicorn magic of the card. I also added some butterflies to the inside scene just to give it a little bit more of something and then some birds to the bottom left hand of the inside scene as well. I hope that you've enjoyed learning about how I created this card. As always, all of the links to the products used are in the description as well as the shades I use for my Copic coloring and the Trinity Stamps shop and YouTube channel. Thank you so much for stopping by and I'll see you again very soon. Thanks. Bye.